Gordy, Ed's son called this morning. He can be with us at the beach house over Christmas. As long as Ed still has those two weeks off. He's got them. I don't know how much Ed wants to see the boy. Thanks. Mm, all right. See you. Big Ed. Hola, Gordy. We're still on that surveillance in North Miami? West Palm Beach, amigo. Only the best for my wife. What's happening with the Funsters? Oh, well, let me see. Uh, Quantico sent me a memo. Seems they want me to ensure that the entire squad meets the weight requirements. I got a sinking feeling that includes me. I don't suppose you can explain to them in a rational way that I'm not really as big as I look. Hey, what happened to Ben? Looks like he ran his bicycle up a tree or something. Hey, Grinch. Ben. Hey, I've got some more on that heist at Steak and Ale restaurant, so see me after you change clothes. What happened to you this morning? I got run off the road by some kid who could barely see over the steering wheel. I got his tags, though. I'm gonna run him through Tallahassee and find out who he is. He is in for one big surprise. <laughs> yeah, I almost feel sorry for the kid. <laughs> but the funniest thing was Bradford's little brother. <laughs> At breakfast, kept putting his toes in the yogurt. I thought you guys egged him on the whole time. No, we, we told him to stop. I bet. He just kept licking it off. <laughs> Sounds delightful. It was gross. Loved it. <sighs> I'll be home late. All right. You gonna be with Bill again? Yeah. I got a line on a new business. Me and Bill invested in some uh, pinball machines. Michael, you don't know a thing about pinball machines. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything about trees either, but that didn't stop me from building up a damn slick landscaping business, did it? Yeah, that's true, but I... I built and scoped out all kinds of ways to get up making this thing pay off. We're gonna put these machines in ice cream bars. Stuff like that. What's the matter? I just don't know why you need him. You were doing okay before he moved down here. Well, we're doing all right now. It's just a little extra money. Each one of these machines is gonna bring in a hundred dollars a week. I'll be right there, Willie. Look, Sandra. I'm just trying to help Bill out. He's been having a rough time. And it is a cash business. We're gonna need a lot of it if we want to keep living like this. I can't make it just cutting lawns now, can I? Huh? No, I guess, I guess not. not. I'll see you later. Okay. Corey, nice work on that science project. Thanks. 
Sergeant. Mike said he'd show me how to handle a gun, if that's okay with you. He said he'd show me stuff you learned in the Army. No, it's not okay with me. Why would you want to know about that stuff anyway? Where'd you get this? Ripped it off the car in front of that woman's gym on South Dixie. Man, a guy like me could have a good time in a place like that. Real good. <laughs> Sounds to me like you're not getting enough at home. Hell, I'm getting plenty. I'm paying for it. Carol Ann's pregnant. Boy, you are paying for it. Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. I had a hepatitis when I was a kid. I've never been able to donate. Eddie, I checked your files. Only disease you've had is chicken pox. I'll, uh, I'll let you know next week. Steak and ale robbery. It's different, so I'm giving it to you. Lots of robberies. What makes this one so different? What are you doing for lunch? Top page. <clears throat> Two suspects hit the armored car with enough firepower to start a revolution. That military camouflage clothing, face masks, automatic weapons, walkie-talkie, combat boots. Well, that's different. And for all that, they only got a little over $2,000. I'll get on this right away, Gordy. NKOB is here. Agent Dove. Yeah. Well, Jerry, you've got an impressive file. Excellent record at the Academy, outstanding performance report, superior SWAT training record. All of which made me ask when your request for transfer came in, how can this man hurt us? I won't. I don't make mistakes. Uh-huh. Well, you're certainly qualified, but you don't have much field experience. Two years organized crime squad. Doesn't mean you're ready for us. We run a fast break here. Sir, I worked the 84 Olympics. I was born for the reactive squad. Everybody knows it's the best work in the FBI. It can be. Each one of our agents handles between 25 and 35 cases at any one time, and we are all available for any one case. Bullpen gets a little crazy at times. Do you see that gray-haired man sitting over there? 53 years old, and he's still the best shot in Miami. Ben Grogan. I've been hearing about him since the Academy. He's incredible. He's more than that. He's your SWAT commander. Yes, sir. Everybody in the bullpen ticks, some a little louder than others. So when something goes down, we pull together as a unit. If shots are fired, only bad guys get whacked. We have a perfect record, and we want to keep it that way. You're not afraid of guns, are you? Yes, sir, I am. Good. are all shorted out. What I gotta do is run the circuit. That's not the problem, Willie. This was supposed to be easy. These machines are supposed to work for us. Well, what do you want to do? Ben Grogan, Jerry Dove, Jerry SWAT train. Ooh, we can always use another one of you guys. I was hoping you'd start him off with something reasonable. Here you go. Start getting familiar with the Sake Nail case. I've got to run this tag through Tallahassee. Some kid almost squashed me with his family car. Listen, I... I tried to learn most of the procedures even before I applied to the squad. What's NKOB? New kid on the block. That's what you are until Ed Morales gives you a nickname. 
and that doesn't happen until you're really one of the funsters. John Hanlon is really the jakester. When he's not in court, he can slide paperwork through the bureaucracy faster than anyone alive or dead. The Marine over there without the uniform is Ron Reisner. Uh, Dick Manowski's the Count. Gordy's the Incredible Hulk when you get to know him better. And uh, Morellis is uh, the refrigerator. And what are you? Ben Grogan. We used to do this in the army. Pretty good at it, too, huh? Yeah. Do you think? We're not interested in your pinball machines anymore. We want our money back. All of it. And if we have any more problems with you, like police problems, we'll be back. You believe me? Man, did you see the look on that dude's oh, yeah. face? He couldn't believe us. You hear his teeth rattle? <laughs> I should have shoved that 44 in his mouth, you know? <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> Just great. You ought to go back to ripping off drug dealers. Nah, no way. They're all a bunch of greasers now, and they got all kinds of weapons. Now we're safe for going up against the cops. Check that out. Piece of cake. Look at that dumb broad. They all with her. We have over two dozen witnesses, and no two people saw the same thing, except for a light-colored Monte Carlo. You know, I'm glad you uh, federal boys have to handle these bank robberies. If it wasn't for the FBI, you local heroes wouldn't have enough time to go chasing your purse snatchers. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Gordy. Metro-Dade handles over 6,000 robberies a year, but I've never seen anything like this one. Military surplus smoke grenade. Cute, huh? Doesn't make any sense. All this, and they get the guard going in when he's empty instead of catching him on his way out. They missed $40,000. Great. Not smart. Well armed. And they'll learn. We follow scripture. We walk with the Lord. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Most of you that has been here a while have heard all about the tragedy in my life. My loving wife, Patty, so brutally murdered by a robber back there in Ohio. Stabbed 16 times. 
and slit her throat. <coughs> you see, the way that candle was blowed out, leaving me a widower, small baby girl to look after. Many times since I've been tempted by despair, but the Lord wouldn't let me. Come to Miami, my little girl, a new wife and her son, to start a new life. And you accepted us in your hearts and let us worship with you. And I want to thank Reverend Hunt for letting me give witness about how things have turned around for me. Even though my life has been all peaches and cream, I thank the Lord because as much as I've seen, I've learned to take the bad with the good. Amen. Amen. Nice shot. But you killed the mailman. Sorry, Ron. I can't believe I did that. It's okay, Jerry. This takes a lot of work. I know better, Ben. I never wanted anything but this. Could have done worse. Almost everyone nails Mama the first time through. We'll go over it in the bullpen. What's the bottom line? We don't even know the color of the suspect's skin. Well, one thing we do know for sure, they're not shy about firing their weapons. The only thing the witnesses all agree on is the bad guys look and act like real soldiers. You think they might be active duty? I'm checking that out. But anyone can get all the experience they need right here in Miami. The Everglades. The place is full of off-the-wall paramilitary groups. Survivalists, supremacists, gun freaks. We should check out some of the hot spots along the Tamiami Trail. Ready, Mom? Come on. Come on. Ah! Hey, why don't we take a trip somewhere, Bill? You know, I have always wanted to see the Smoky Mountains. How am I going to pay for all this? I got to make a living. Uh... A couple of months, you can look like hell in that bathing suit. Can't you say something nice? Well, I did that at church. Hey, Willie. Oh, they heard about Patty and all before, Bill. Oodles of times. Don't you think everybody knows you use the same old sob story to date all the single women back home? Heck, you even proposed to a lot of them. Everybody knows all about it. Yeah. I had my pick of the litter, and I had to pick her. They only went out with you because you bought them jewelry. <laughs> you disgust me. I told you I didn't want another kid! I want you the hell out of my house! Your house? I bought it with my money. You mean Patty's money. If we ever get a divorce, I want you to know I am going after half this house. They wear thin quick, don't they? Oh, boy, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I found a way to fix that. Let's take a ride. Daddy! Get in the house, Melissa. See you, sweetheart. Hi. Yo, listen up. I'm divorced. Hi. <laughs> Smike. 
Hi, Mike. So, where do you two know each other from? Bill said something about the Army. The Rangers. We were sort of an elite. Sneak behind enemy lines, destroy, liquidate, stuff like that. Is that true? That's us. Rednecks, white trucks, blue ribbon beer. <laughs> blue ribbon beer. <laughs> this man right here saved my life once on a mission. In Vietnam? I can't say any more about it than that. It's still classified. <laughs> I don't believe you. Lady, I was a platoon leader. You look up my record at Fort Ord. At Fort Campbell, I was Army Airborne. You know something? I don't care if she believes me or not. <laughs> Mike's done more than you can know. You owe him an apology. I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry. I, I just came in on all this, OK? Hey, why don't we all do something together? You and your wife. We can go to Disney World. That's a great idea. What do you say, Mike? <laughs> we got things to do, Willie. What's your name? Vicky. Well, Vicky, I don't know if I should be telling you this, but we got a major drug dealer coming into Miami in the next couple of days. And Bill and I, not now. Willie and I got to arrange a little uh, welcome for him. You're from the Central Intelligence Agency? Under contract with CIA. No denied, of course, but uh, ever since the military, with our specialized training, they send us in to intercept the dealers and interdict the flow of drugs. And we get to keep the proceeds. Money, not drugs. Good. <laughs> See, the way the law reads, a lot of these jokers get off on technicalities. The cops' hands are tied. Something's got to be done about it. Is that right, Will? We're not dressing down because we have a warrant, and I want them to know who we are. This is the most active group, so they're heavily armed, and they're no fans of the FBI. As far as descriptions, all we have are two males, ages and race unknown. Height 5'10 to 6 feet. Weight 170 to 200 pounds. Look for a Mini-14 or AR-15 rifle that have been converted to full automatic. Along with that, 12-gauge shotgun with modified pistol grip stock. And if we really get lucky, a late model Monte Carlo, which has been variously described as white, yellow, gold, or beige. Well, Funsters, that's it. Showtime. This is the FBI. Put your weapons on the ground and step back. Please, place your weapons on the ground and step back. Just who the hell do you think you are? Exactly what I said. This is private property. We want to ask you some questions. Why don't you get in your car and get out of here? We don't want any trouble. We just want to ask you some questions. Yeah, questions. You're always asking us questions. Yeah, we are, because we need to find out. Have you seen two men, probably paramilitary, in a late... Hey! 
Got there. It's just a Pelican. I didn't fire no bullets. <sighs> okay. Maybe four grand. That's it. Not too bad for a morning's work. Not good enough. We go again. Vault is downstairs. We can't open it. It's on a time lock. Don't you mess with me. Get on in there. Get in. What are you looking at? Sport. Come on, come on! Get down! Down! Let's get out of here. Now we can go to Disney World. You know, there is something that is just not right about this, but it's legal. They actually have permits for these things. Gordy. A call just came in. Two banks were just taken down in Miami. Are two soldiers of fortune? They robbed both of them, back to back. They didn't even bother to change the license plates. Did they get away? In a gold Monte Carlo. What are you going to be in the pageant? Indian princess. Oh, good. What do you do? I want to share the few programs. Hi, Daddy. Oh, Bill, this is Detective Hamill. Is that so? Um, come on, Melissa, Scott, let's go play in your room. Come on. Let's go, Scott. Birchfield, Ohio, PD. So I understand you're in the uh, landscaping business, Mr. Maddox. That's right. Looks like you're doing pretty well. It's a living. 
Detective Hamill's been asking questions about Patty. Oh, it's a couple of years since anyone's asking about her. Get me some pop, Carol Ann. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, you want to see it? Yes, thanks. Uh, well, we haven't been able to finish the homicide investigation completely just yet, so uh, just a couple of <laughs> small details need to be cleaned up. Maybe I can clean them up for you. Maybe your wife shouldn't hear any of this. In the eyes of the Lord, husband and wife are to share everything. Well, let's see. Uh, can I put... No, thank you. Uh, we're a little confused, uh, Mr. Maddox, as to why you uh, took out such a large insurance policy on Patty. I want a security for my daughter. Mm, of course, I understand that, but usually a fellow might take one out on himself, not on his wife. Guess I've seen things a little different. Uh, then there's that letter. Uh, a witness says that you wrote a letter to a friend describing how and when Patty could be murdered during a fake robbery at the hospital. Everybody asked me about that, and I told them there wasn't ever any letter. I know, but the witness claims to have seen it. Says that you destroyed it. As a lord is my witness. That letter never existed at all. I believe you, Mr. Max, but I mean, you see the way things are. Now, a lie detector test was offered to you at the time of the murder, uh, and I'll tell you what, it's being offered to you again. What do you say? I'd really rather not. Don't you want to put all this behind you once and for all? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it already is. I got one more detail here I'd like to run by if I could. Immediately after your wife's death, you had an affair with a woman who was very close to her. Apparently her best friend. Um, Janice Wren. Sorry, Janice Wren. Mrs. Wren says that you tried to seduce her. Look, we, uh, we went to bed once or twice. But I made my peace with the Lord right after. She says you raped her. She said you snuck into her house, you waited for her in the dark, and that you were naked. She wanted it that way. It's a shame now, that's all. She was married at the time. The old man wasn't paying much attention to her. She just naturally turned to me. In my grief, I needed love for real bad. She saw my weakness. I'll admit I fought with the... with the devil over that one. She also says that you told her I did it, meaning you killed Patty, or you had somebody do it for you. I stand before God with a clear conscience. And that's good enough for me. Where are you running off to? Cat got your tongue. Oh, I'm tired, Bill. I'm going to bed. You ain't tired. There's something else. I didn't know you were a suspect in Patty's murder. Did you kill her? I meant what I said. Edmundo! You are gonna give blood, aren't you? You know I can't stand the sight of blood. Listen, I checked those tags on that gold Monte yeah. Carlo. Uh, they belong to a Spanish speaker named Fiorina. Uh, he claims uh, his son went target practicing some couple of months ago uh, near the Tamiami Trail. Um, both the kid and the car disappeared the same day. Mr. Morales? Hey, 
with me now. Stay with me. All right. You take it out. Must. All right, come at me. That's it. I got your pops off. Let me show you something. All right, you got the right idea. I just want you to get the baseline quicker. Okay. You get the baseline, throw a head fake, draw the guy out of his feet, okay. move around him, up for the shot, okay. and you will draw the foul. Okay. All right? Let's try it again. Come on. That's it. That's it. Throw the fake. Ah. Beautiful. <laughs> All Michael. right. Michael. Huh? Telephone's for you. Who is it? Bill. All right. Uh, try it one more time. We'll be right back. That's it. You guys look like you're having fun. Yeah, I still got some pretty good moves, huh? <laughs> Kid's doing great. Good. Yeah, Willie, speak to me. Well, I'm free, white, 21 again. Did you get rid of her? Like a bad cold. She backed up and left this morning. So we say we uh, take the girls to have a little fun, celebrate. Well, I don't know about you, Willie, but I thought we had some business to take care of. Time, Willie. I haven't got a clue what I'm gonna get Sandra for Christmas. I don't know what you mean. The worst part is fighting those crowds in the mall. Maybe I'll get her a nighty. Woo woo. See the look on that dude's face? <laughs> you couldn't believe you just walk up and shoot him like that. <laughs> Christmas, Willie. What's the matter? I saw that car before we switched to the truck. Make a turn here.
guys. All right, gentlemen. Ben, what do we have? Uh, two white males, early 30s, one slightly balding with a mustache, medium complexion. The other with dirty blonde hair and a goatee. The witness followed him in his car for several blocks, but he never got a clear look at their faces. He's lucky he didn't get shot. He saw them dump the Monte Carlo and drive away in a pickup. We recovered the car. It is Fiorina's, but it's clean. There are no prints. What about the pickup? The witness couldn't give us anything except that it's white. He lost it in a residential area running along South Dixie at uh, 132nd Avenue. Says it just disappeared. It just disappeared less than a mile from my house. What bothers me most is the way they shot that guard. There was no reason for it. It was like an execution. We'll be hearing from these guys again. And when we do, we better be ready for them. We thank thee for these thy gifts, for which we are about to receive. Thy bountiful harvest is welcome and appreciated in this household. And we are grateful and hope, Jesus, that you will continue to watch over this house and keep us all happy. Amen. a lot. Do you shoot people? I've never had to, know. I thought policemen shoot people. Only if they have to. I guess I've been lucky. But you have a gun. Yeah, I got a gun. Can I see it? If you want. When you arrest the bad guy, what do you do? Well, I say, uh, I'm from the FBI and you're under arrest. But what if he tries to hurt you? <sighs> Why do you ask me all these questions for, Marco? Because all my friends in school know you're a policeman, and they want to know if you shoot people. Well, I do what I have to do. We can't let the bad guy just go around hurting people, can we? But can't you just talk to them? I wish I could. Go on now, go get dressed. Thanks, honey. I don't want Marco growing up thinking I go around just shooting people. He's not going to do that, Ed. He just doesn't understand why there have to be bad guys. Well, that makes two of us.
Ben, aren't you going home? I guess I didn't realize how late it was getting. Elaine McNeil called. She said Gordy's out driving around the neighborhood looking for that white pickup. I'm not surprised. Oh, Joan. By the way, Merry Christmas. You too. Okay, watch this. <laughs> See there, Willie? Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Huh? Boy, I love this baby. I'd go up against anybody with this Mini 14. How much ammo did you buy? 5,000 rounds. Girls, Willie's got the uh, burgers on. How do you want them? Rare. Over easy. Over easy. Well, I like it. Will you get rid of that stupid hat? Makes you look like a wimp. Give me the damn hat. A head. wimp. Give me... Come on. Give me the damn hat. Give me the... What? Give me the damn hat. Whoa, 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 Give me the damn hat. You want the hat? You got it. Hey, come on. Lighten up. Have a beer. Come on. Don't you think they get scary sometimes? Always talking about... Knocking over drug dealers with the CIA? We're not supposed to discuss all that. It's supposed to be a secret. Oh, come on. Bill doesn't make a big deal about keeping it a secret. He's always flashing all that money around they get to keep. He bought me this ring last week. Oh, look at that. For cash. He must love you a lot to buy you a ring that big. Oh, he loves me. I know that. And he wants to make love to me all the time. But it's always wham-bam, you know? Never a kind word. I just wish I could learn to understand him better. You've hardly had time. You both fell in love so quick, even Mike was surprised. <laughs> it was a world when I guess. Even when we first started dating, it was like... He needed his approval or something. Sandra, he can't make up his mind about anything without Mike. Well, they've always been tight. Ever since the military. More than that. Mike frightens me sometimes. Don't let him. 
Mike just naturally does that to women. You get used to it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'm just a little confused. That's all. Maybe you don't know how lucky you are. I got my man, and I intend to hang on to him. It is no fun being alone. Willie. I want to go for Miami Federal again. Get the armored car. They'll never expect us back so soon. Hell, I don't know. I'd just soon go inside and nail a teller. Those bozos in the armored car can shoot back. So what? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Woo! Who wants it nice and easy over here? Bang, bang. I'm going to be late, Daddy. Relax. You still have a few minutes before the movie starts. But my friend's already there. Please. Suzanne, I'm looking for something. I'll get you there on time. Tonight, you can't go to the movies tonight. But you promise. Suzanne, I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. Oh. I can't sleep. What is it, Gordy? Hmm? 20 years, the first time you brought it home like this. I thought this was Ben Groban's case. It is. Just something about these guys. They've got the hook in all of us. Any leads? White pickup truck. No tags, no description. Just two maniacs who strike at random and they disappear. And you believe they actually live in our neighborhood? I'm absolutely convinced of it. Is that why you put your hunting gun in the trunk of my car? Saw that, huh? Uh-huh. So did Reverend Stowe. He was helping me load the dishes after the bake sale. Well, I'm sorry about that. I guess I should have told you about it. You think this is the answer? I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to do. I just know we're taking too long to do it. Hey, partner, put that gun down. You a cop? No. Step back in that water, sir. Let me see your wallet. Sure, man. You can have it. Take my money and the car, okay? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
is incredible. After they shot him, he crawls three and a half miles through a swamp and flags down a car on the highway. Thank you again. Mr. Colazzo, I'm Jerry Dove. This is Special Agent Grogan. We're from the FBI. If you're feeling up to it, we'd like to ask you just a couple questions. <laughs> Guys find my car yet? No, sir. But we're just as anxious as you are to get our hands on it. I don't understand. Why did they have to shoot me just to steal my car? Nothing these guys do make much sense, sir. But you can help us. So far, you're the only one who's actually seen them and lived. It's very important for you to tell us whatever you can remember about them. That's no problem. I remember everything about them. One thing I didn't get to see was the license plate on the white pickup. But the fellow who shot me, if I could draw, I would show you exactly what he looked like. Metro Dade provided us with this sketch, so I want to make sure these go out to all the businesses on South Dixie, especially the banks. And I want the tags of Colazzo's Black Monte Carlo played over the radio like a tune on the top 40. I guarantee you that car will show up at the next robbery. Finding that white pickup is going to be like trying to nail Jello to a wall. We can't run the tags of every Ford pickup in Florida, but we can run the ones on South Dixie. He got us, Gordy. Black Monte Carlo. Yeah. This is going to go on forever. Well, this is just pitiful. How much? Not enough for all the grief they put us through. Maybe we shouldn't have hit the same bank twice in a row. You know what I think? I think if we go back that bank, hit it again. Typical. <laughs> we come all the way out here to see Haley's Comet. What do the guys do? Talk about work. It's not always this bad. Well, it's easy for you to say you're one of them. <laughs> Whatever happened to that kid you tried to run over with your bicycle? <laughs> little hoodlum. I paid him a visit at his house. Turns out his father is a deputy sheriff with Metro Dade. <laughs> nice kid, but the old man kept asking me when we're going to catch those two Rambos working South Dixie. You know, we might be able to do something about that day after tomorrow. What's so special about the day after tomorrow? Friday. I've listed all the bank robberies in Miami since October, and out of 63, I got our boys on five. They almost always strike in the morning on a Friday. You thinking of a stakeout? Why not? I'm tired of letting them make all the moves. Glory, we'd be spread out along almost 100 blocks of South Dixie. Why this Friday? Just a hunch. Okay, guys, picture time. <laughs> Knew I wouldn't disappoint you. Come on, come on, everybody get over between. One, 
Yeah, mom. You want me next to want a picture of me next to this jacket? <laughs> I've got a reputation to uphold. Go ahead and moan. You guys are all going to thank me for this someday. But OK, serious. if we're going to do it, let's do it right. All right, absolutely. Serious. 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 Is this a ser is this serious? Are we going to? Oh, right. No absolutely. messing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious. Yeah. 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 I would just like to say a few words and thanks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The people that made this possible. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Serious now. Serious. All right, everybody, hold it. Come on, Jerry. Smile. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Anything happens to me, I want to make sure my daughter's taken care of. I still got a few bucks salted away. All of it goes to Melissa. Why are you bringing this up now? Something bad's going to happen. About. I ain't scared of nothing. I'm being set up. I know too much, and they want me out of the way. Who's doing this to you? Who do you think? The FBI, the CIA. They'll never admit I was doing their dirty work for them. There must be somebody who can help, Willie. Somebody you can call. Why'd you call me Willie? Well, isn't that what Mike calls you? Nobody's allowed to call me that except him. Well, maybe you shouldn't be around him so much. You don't have to let him be the boss all the time. Well, that doesn't tell me what to do. We work those missions for the government. I'm in charge. He listens to me. Now you butt out. Can I help you? What? Now I'm under a lot of pressure. Things you can't understand. There's only one thing you gotta worry about. That's keeping me happy. Aren't I doing that? Just don't get pregnant. Well, I don't know what to do, Ben. I, I mean, for the first time in my life, I feel like I really want to settle down with someone, and, and Jennifer says she's not ready yet. I'm the last one to ask for advice. For 23 years, the Bureau's been my family. She's afraid of being married to the FBI. You okay, Ben? Yeah. But I'm starting to understand the way those guys think. And I'm scared. They are gonna hit again. Maybe not this Friday or the next. But Gordy's right. They're coming back. And you know why? Not just for the money anymore. They want to see what we're made of. Just going to work. Don't forget about Melissa's babysitter. She didn't get paid last week. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll be bringing home some money today. Bye. 
On the international scene, President Reagan is calling Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi a mad dog. In light of overwhelming evidence... You know, it's about time somebody nailed that Gaddafi. He asked me we ought to wipe him out. <laughs> you were in Vietnam, weren't you, Mike? Almost. It is 22 minutes past the hour end. I was all trained and ready to go, and then some wimp in Washington pulled the plug. You know, Mike, I'm doing a term paper on Vietnam. Maybe you could help. The way things are going in the Middle East, I wouldn't worry about a term paper. Why don't you just join the Army and kick butt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, I think I just saw an armored car go around the corner. Hey, you'd better take me right home. Right, and then you'd have to miss that geometry test and schedule for this morning. Well, yeah, but you can never be too careful these days. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, wish me luck. Wish me luck. Okay. Oh, and Dad, just don't get shot, OK? You got a deal. OK. Hey, Jakester. You gonna go on surveillance with us this morning? I'll wait for all this. Grand jury wants me Monday morning. Well, maybe you could kiss right out there with me and come right back. I need your advice, Jake. I, I want to find out what I can do legally to spend more time with my son. Eddie, I really gotta hang in here with this paperwork. Maybe this afternoon when you get back. Yeah. Ron? This is all we got? Well, Gordy's meeting us at the shopping center at 8.15. You are going with us, aren't you? I'm the case agent, aren't I? Dressing down, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'd worry if I were you, Stevie O. You look too much like a man without a work permit. <laughs> Hola, Paloma. Rough night, huh? Paloma? Dove, in Spanish. I thought after meeting Jennifer the other night that uh, you two were a couple of lovebirds. It's official, Jerry. You finally got your nickname. Well, we better hit it. We've got 25 miles of traffic, and Gordy's waiting. Hey, refrigerator. Child custody is not my strong suit, but I'll ride with you. How much do you charge an hour? How much money you got? <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Number 72. Your order's ready. 72. Beautiful weather, huh? 73. Yeah. Come and get it. That's why we moved down here, isn't it? Egg sandwich. Large soda. Why are you so jumpy lately? Cut me some slack, Mike. You scared? No. I can count on you, can I? You're damn straight. Everyone on this surveillance has been assigned grids along South Dixie Highway from 130th to 186th Street. As you know, the suspects drive a late model white Ford F-150 pickup. Also be on the lookout for a 1979 black Monte Carlo. Florida tag NTJ891. Do not attempt to apprehend them if a robbery's in progress. They are heavily armed and they like to shoot. Do not engage them in a chase along South Dixie Highway. We don't want any civilians hurt. Any questions? Let's do it.
Gordy, the manager at the Barnett Bank doesn't believe I'm FBI. I showed her the badge, but she still wants someone to verify. <laughs> well, go back in there and tell her what we're up to. Frosty, this is Big Ed. Explain to her why you're dressing down, man. I explain, but she thinks I'm looking too a sleazy. But tell her you're a friend of mine, everything will be OK. A friend of yours? Uh-uh. I'd be arrested. Warn her out. He's coming back around. <laughs> Break all units. You are behind a black Monte Carlo. Florida license NTJ891. Heading south on South Dixie. Uh, make that north on South Dixie. Repeat. Heading north on South Dixie. Two white males. Fitting subject description. We are approaching 124th Street. There they are. Cops at that bank. Don't be too sure. There's more than one back there. Make a little turn here. They know we're onto them. They know we're cops. Ben, we're right behind you, babe. Ben, this is Gordy. I'm going parallel one block to your right. I copy. Subject's making a right-hand turn on 82nd Avenue. Gordy, you better come back to us. I copy. I'm on my way. Ben, what's going on? Why are they moving so slow? I don't know. Subject on the passenger side is loading a long-barreled weapon. How far is our backup? Five to seven minutes. One more block, and they're back into the heavy traffic. These guys are shooters. we got to keep them away from civilians. Then let's do it. Now! We'll jump ahead and keep them off of South Dixie Highway. All units, felony car stop. Let's take them. Move!
out of here. Ah! Where are you going? Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Mike! Mike, you okay? Oh my God. Wait, it stopped. It's over. Lady, you better hurry and get those cops in here. And plenty of ambulances. dead if you stay here.
Captain, more guys got shot. They're killing each other. Who are they? I don't know. That's enough, Ed. It's over. Jakes, are you okay? I'm all right. What about the Grinch? He didn't make it. Lord, he might not either. Watch um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these. They're they're for Agent Grogan. You just put them on his desk. Someone will take care of them later. A thorough investigation into the backgrounds of Michael Platt and William Maddox revealed that neither had ever been arrested for any violent crime. No family member or neighbor had ever reported any incident of violent behavior. Many questions, including those surrounding the Ohio murder of Patty Maddox, remain unanswered. This event has been studied extensively. It now serves as a training model for the FBI and other law enforcement agencies throughout the country, so that they might better prepare themselves for street confrontations with violent criminals. However, no amount of preparation or training can eliminate the risks of what might happen should similar events occur. Agents Arancho, Manauzi, and Reisner are still with the FBI. John Hanlon recovered from his wounds and after a full and successful career, retired from the FBI. He is now in private law practice. Ed Morellis was named Law Enforcement Officer of the Year he and his wife were assigned as supervisory special agents at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. Gordon McNeil underwent extensive surgery and rehabilitation for bullet wounds to his spine. He intends to return to his duties in the Miami office of the FBI. Benjamin Grogan and Jerry Dove died of their wounds. 
They were the 36th and 37th FBI agents killed in the line of duty.